What's going on guys, it's Jeremy, and today we're gonna to be talking about the what, when, and why of pressure bandages. Pressure dressings are one of the most standard pieces of gear in any IFAC. And in recent years, they've started to move their way from tactical and military medicine to civilian and EMS medicine. However, they are still extremely undercovered and underutilized by a lot of people of any profession or even on the civilian side. These are extremely versatile pieces of gear and they have a lot of different uses and we're gonna talk about some of those. So obviously the purpose of any pressure dressing is to provide supplemental pressure in line with packing a wound with gauze. And some of the most common pressure dressings you're gonna come across is the North American Rescue Emergency Trauma Dressing, the H bandage or the Israeli bandage. And for the sake of examples and demonstrations, we're gonna be talking uh, with the emergency trauma dressing from North American Rescue. So there are a few main ways you can utilize your pressure dressings. The first one we're gonna talk about, and this is the most common and the main purpose of it is use, utilizing it to create supplemental pressure with uh, packing galls and packing a wound. So how does that work? Regardless of where you may be packing your wounds, whether it's in the shoulders or armpits, the lower portion of the pelvic girdle or the upper or lower extremities, you're going to need to apply pressure after you pack a wound for around three minutes. And, that, and that's give or take depending on who you ask, but you need to hold pressure for a certain period of time. However, you may not always be able to do that depending on your environment or depending what your task is you may need to free up your hands and you won't have time to hold pressure on all of the wounds you may be dressing in somebody. There be may be multiple patients. You may need to move your patients. Uh, you know, you never know what you might be doing. So pressure dressings come in extremely handy with that, specifically in areas where you cannot apply a tourniquet. So we're talking about the shoulders, armpits, and the lower portion of the groin. We obviously can't put tourniquets there. So we utilize our pressure bandage to apply that pressure for us in those wound areas. Even after you've applied pressure for two to three minutes, it's always good practice to apply pressure dressings to your packed wounds, just to kind of help solidify that clot uh, if you for some reason had to delay or it didn't really solidify. So there are other methods of using your pressure dressing. The next method is going to be utilizing it with the abdominal and thoracic injuries. And I don't mean necessarily deep penetration wounds, that you may want to use a chest cavity for, I'm sorry, a chest seal for, specifically in the chest cavity. However, if you do not have any more chest seals or you're a person who prefers a pressure bandage to dress abdominal wounds, this is an extremely useful piece of gear. Now I want to you know, make it known that we're not utilizing these for pressure whenever we wrap them anywhere on the box. We're using it for its wrap purposes. So if we look at our pressure dressing, no matter what kind you normally open up, you're always gonna get this thick four by four gauze pad right here. Uh, it's about half inch thick, normally rather absorbent. Some are aligned with hemostatic agents, but you place this over top of your wound. Let's say it's a penetration wound to the stomach. You're gonna place that over top of the wound and then you're going to lightly wrap it around uh, the abdomen. Now it's important to note that bleeding is not stopped or not fixed, I should say, in the pre-hospital stage of care. You need a surgeon to fix any type of major bleeding, specifically anywhere in the box. So what we're going to do is try to dress that to the best of our ability and get them to higher care as soon as we can. If you have any type of lacerations that are you know, superficial on the surface, even on the extremities or any other place where it may just be capillary bleeding and it's not necessarily as deep for arterial or venous bleeding, you can utilize pressure bandages. You may want to add more gauze, but you can use this gauze pad, wrap it on that laceration, that abrasion, whatever it may be, and you know have that apply pressure to form those clots. Another good utilization of the pressure bandage is if we have some sort of protrusion in our abdomen or anywhere in the lower portion of the box, we can't necessarily put a chest seal or just standard gauze wrap over top of that we may need to get a larger piece of gauze, get it wet so that organ that is protruding doesn't dry out, and then cover it with this type of wrap or any type of other supplemental wrap you may have. 
uh, you know, bottom line is pressure dressings have a ton of purposes. They can be utilized a ton of different ways. And it's important that you understand what, when, and why you're utilizing a pressure dressing or any piece of medical gear for that, uh, with that being said. So, you know, regardless of whatever setting you may find yourself in, whether you're a civilian, whether you're a professional, whether you're on the military side, understand what your gear is for and why you're using it. Don't just start wrapping things because it's in your IFAC and you were told to use it. Understand why you have it and when you're supposed to use it. If you guys like this content, if you're something you would have seen differently, if you have advice, professional or non-professional, leave it down in the comment section below, guys. I try to pay attention to the comment section to the best of my ability. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Check us out on our website. And as always, guys, train hard, train often.